Hello everybody and welcome back to another Wednesday one shot. I think this one's going to be interesting for some people to dive into. Maybe you've heard of this before and maybe you never have. For people who have never experienced it, it's a little mind blowing. And for those who do have any sort of sleep paralysis, this will just be such a, <sighs> I'm so glad that I'm not the only one and also what is this? Like, why are we doing this? Let's just go ahead and dive into it. I'm excited to talk about it. So I have experienced sleep paralysis since I can remember. It, it's hard to pinpoint when it began, but I just remember thinking, man, that was weird. <laughs> when you wake up from, finally wake up from a dream where you couldn't. It, at first never really scared me. I just thought, wow, this is kind of odd and I would explore it. But then as I got older and I started to, I started to learn a little bit more about like anxiety and the feelings of anxiety. And then I started to get really worried about being stuck. And that's when like agoraphobia, if you've seen that video, started to kind of take hold. I started to feel a little bit more fearful of certain things that started to make me feel anxious and would trigger these anxiety panic attacks. And once I started having panic attacks, that's when I feel like it switched. Like the dreams no longer felt like a fun little kitty like exploration. It was terror. I can't freaking wake up. I cannot for the life of me move my arms or my legs. What the hell? Like I was so worried that I am going to have like a heart attack. And I don't even want to say that because even just saying that out loud, I don't want to even like put that out into the universe or even I'm going to stop talking about it. I don't want to start giving myself ideas. <laughs> so I just give myself reassurance that I'm going to be able to get myself out of this. So here's, let me just like talk you through it. And this might be a little bit of a trigger warning for anybody who has like anxiety or panic attacks. So just be careful. Just beware when watching this. I don't want to make anybody panic or feel weird. I don't know how else to do this video if I don't describe exactly what it feels like. So I'm asleep. I'm usually laying on my stomach. I have had it when I've been laying on my back. I've noticed that I have these dreams, particularly when I feel like I might be woken up by something. So I maybe have something that I'm anticipating that day, or I saw something in the news that broke the night before that maybe would affect everyone the next day. I worry about the world too much. I do. I worry about the world all the time and people in it and people being hurt and just the terror that's going on in this world it haunts me. And it's, oh, poor me. No, it's not that. It's just that those things, if I see or hear a lot about things like that before I go to sleep, then I have this unfinished business of worrying that I feel I must get to. The feeling is basically just like full on paralysis. Your arms and your legs, you're trying to move them. You're thinking in your mind, like move, move. Sometimes your eyes are even open. You can see the room. You can see your dogs laying on the bed or you could see your feet on the couch. But then maybe something's going on in the room that isn't real. My eyes are opening, my eyes are closing. I can see things, I can't see things. Sometimes you can just see very clearly the room and yourself and your body, but sometimes you're outside of it and looking down at it and you can see yourself laying there um, from a different perspective and you're like saying, get up, get up, get up and you just can't. It's, it's just as terrifying as it sounds. look at things in two ways in every situation, right? You can either look at it as this horrible, terrible, scary thing, or you can look at it as an opportunity to uh, maybe learn from it, maybe get something from it that is an empowering thing, like more mind over matter, learning how to give yourself a little bit of reassurance and security in your, in your, in your subconscious so that when you are faced with any situation or scenario, you're able to get yourself into a calmer state. So that is a huge thing I'm trying to learn right now is just, now it's too bright. I can't. Sorry if the light goes in and out. I'm consistently changing it because of the clouds. I feel like it's going to teach me eventually how to have a second backup subconscious Jiminy Cricket, whatever you want to call it, that's in there that can 
come into action in any scenario, whether I'm awake or asleep, that is stress. So that's what I'm learning in therapy. I know I talk about therapy all the time, but therapy is what is getting me through so much right now. And it's helping me so much with things that have been bothering me for a really long time. So we worked on the sleep paralysis. We talked about it. We did a little bit of EMDR to just kind of reset that so that when I do have a paralysis dream, I don't put myself in such a tizzy that I'm in terror mode. Um, I do scream. So I don't every time, but when I'm really stuck and I feel like my husband is laying next to me or my dogs are in the room, I'm trying to get them to wake me up and I'm screaming for them to do it. And I know that you're not supposed to always wake people up. I think there's some people that have really deep dreams that can wake up and become very violent. I know sleepwalkers can have that. So it's a little different for me. It's not a sleepwalker phase thing where I would like punch you. <laughs> like I just need you to wake me up because in my mind, I'm yelling at the top of my lungs, help. But in real life, I don't know what I'm doing. I think sometimes I have just been flat out screaming. My husband, a few times he's woken me up so I know that I was audibly out like, actually screaming and I, I, when I would wake up, I always immediately wanna cry. Like that's the first thing is I'm like, <laughs> I'm so scared and my husband, He's in a big dreamer. He never talks about his dreams and he doesn't have really intense ones where he wakes up and goes, whoa, I had the weirdest dream. Never does that. I do it all the time. Every day I'm just like, that was a weird dream. I'll watch YouTube and then like that YouTuber will be in my dream and it sucks because like they're always my best friends. <laughs> and then I wake up and realize that they don't know who the hell I am. I can't even tell you how many times I have had dreams that celebrities or YouTubers that I saw on TV before I went to sleep or my BFF. I'm having this fun, good time. And then this is what I should talk about with my therapist because uh, in the background, it's like, but where are the dogs? Have you let them out? Have they peed today? You need to go let them out. Like the dogs need taken care of. Are you having a good time? Because you have other things you need to be doing. Like my brain doesn't even let me have fun. Sidebar. My husband will wake me up if it's really bad, but he doesn't always hear it or he doesn't always understand that I'm struggling if I'm not screaming, but my dog one time did. He saw it happening and he ran over to me and he slapped me across the face. It was more of a like this. And he has this thing he does where he's wagging his tail when he thinks I'm playing and he bats at me and he's like, uh, 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 and it's this funny little voice he gets. He was doing that. He was smacking me and thought I was playing and just like, I think I could tell he, would, he was concerned and he didn't like it. And as soon as I woke up, because he did that, I held him and I grabbed him and I squeezed him and I was like, Marvin, good boy. I want him to learn to do that. If I can get my dogs, either one of them, to wake me up because mama's making a funny sound, yes, <laughs> I'm no longer stuck in my dream. What a relief. I just changed out my battery and the light just fixed itself. That looks so good, right? Right, does it look good? So if you have a pet that sees you freaking out like that and they, wake you up. I would give them so much praise because it would be so great to be able to train our pets to wake us up if we ever have these night terrors. I call them night terrors purely because they have transformed into that. They didn't start out that way, but they sure have become it. I now am mortified when I'm having these terrible dreams that I can't seem to escape. Rarely is there something happening in them that's genuinely scary, like say a predator or something is after me. That is something that the thought of scares me so much that I would do any sort of hypnotism therapy. Like if you've got something you can take that helps you sleep that is homeopathic, if you need to be medicated by something that's a little stronger than that, I totally understand. And I do have little routines that I do at night to make it better, but yeah, it's under moments of high stress. It's under moments that's going either on in my personal life, in the world, in my family's life, worry. Um, sometimes it can be something as simple as just unfinished tasks. So if you've ever seen the painting, The Nightmare, that painting is like from the 17 or 1800s and it talks, it kind of explains or shows how people were having these moments of like almost being demonized and that this demon like sits on top of your chest or your stomach and keeps you held down. 
and they won't let you wake up and that's called the nightmare and it's this like demon this picture of this demon i think it's such a really cool image and painting i've always been fascinated by it probably because i experienced sleep paralysis but i just wonder if those were people back in that time because everything was so like open to um interpretation based on your religion and then i did a photo shoot when i was in my early 20s where the photographer's daughter actually stood on top of me and he did this cool effect on her because I told him that I had these um, wild nightmares just in conversation and I brought all these different costumes and he was like, oh, my, we should use that cool nightgown and do one where you're like laying. Have you ever seen the nightmare? And I was like, no, what's the nightmare? And we start talking about it and then that's how I found out about the painting. So that picture is really a cool reference. And so that just shows like even in my 20s, I was talking about it and getting a photo shoot done based off of this like sleep paralysis thing and it just is really interesting. So on my Instagram, I posted that I was having sleep paralysis and I have friends of all walks of life. Some of them were like psychic mediums that were saying that I was having an outer body experience and that a demon had come in and was taking over my body while I was out exploring the universe. And I love that idea. I'm like, yes, I'm out exploring. I'm having a great time. Hey, Jupiter, what's up, homie? Like, I'm just out there living my best life except for the person or the whatever it is this demon or idea of whatever has come into my body and has taken it over is torturing me with fear and when i'm trying to get back from my little adventure that i'm having out up in the galaxy i can't get back into my body anymore and so that idea i think is very very interesting is it true i don't know <laughs> i don't believe what you want Another friend who uh, is a like tattoo, historical tattoo instructor, like he teaches classes, he actually said that Japanese mythology has this really cool creature called the Baku elephant. The Baku elephant, I'm going to read a little bit about it so that I can stay on topic. A Baku tattoo is a Japanese tattoo inspired by Chinese and Japanese mythologies. Baku are supernatural creatures that are said to eat nightmares and bad dreams, but it can also transform them into good ones. They are often brightly colored to contrast the dark nature of the bad dreams. Because of this, a Baku tattoo is considered to be auspicious and protective and can be a good luck charm. If you want to read more about the Baku and its mythological meanings, there's so much out there in literature and online, so have at it because it's fascinating. It is the reason why I recently got it on my stomach. I chose it on my stomach because like the painting, The Nightmare, the demon is on your stomach holding you down and I felt like the Baku could protect me. In the back of my mind is there to protect me and so hopefully if I ever have another sleep nightmare dream, I will remember that I have the Baku there to protect me and it will come to my rescue just in my psyche. So you can see it again. I showed it in my vlog, but See how it has the elephant tusks, the tiger body, and it's super cool and I really love it. So if anybody was wondering why I got that tattoo, that is why I got the Baku. And I thought it needed its own video and its own explanation because I love it. I think it's one of my absolute most favorite tattoos that I have and it's not even finished. I just find it to be a fascinating topic. I'm sorry if you deal with it and it scares you just as bad as me. I'm sorry if you have night terrors because it sucks. It's the worst. I really hope now that I'm not talking about it that I don't have one anytime soon because sometimes you can like talk about them and then suddenly you have one. I'll tell you guys if I do. If I'm in a vlog and I'm trying to like keep you guys updated, I'll mention it if I have one and hopefully either Marvin will wake me up or I can now use my tools learned in therapy. So that is the best thing I could say. If you have any of these night terrors and issues, um, obviously speak to like a specialist or somebody that is knows you if it's whether your doctor or your therapist that can help you with it if it's bad because I do worry I worry about my health when it comes to how scared I am I mean the amount of fear is um, a different level and I don't know how to describe it it's it's actually like it is it's the, a complete nightmare it's like the, the worst feeling it's so scary that's it I hope this is interesting for you if you watched it all the way through thank you so much please do subscribe I'm doing Wednesday videos where I sit down and talk about a topic and it's just so fun I've been really enjoying it so please give me a thumbs up 
and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye. Thank you.